Hey, what's up guys? I've got a project today that if you are a maker or a tinkerer or, you know, somebody who is just into electronic stuff, I think you're really going to like it. I've been working on it for quite a while and trying to get it to work just right. It's been a little bit elusive. I've looked at lots of online references and uh, what really helped me out was a video that I saw from Julian Eilert who helped me out with the formula. So, with uh, no further ado, let me show you the Arduino battery internal resistance meter. Uh, the internal resistance of a battery is one of the indicators of how healthy your battery is. So if you've got a standard alkaline battery, it really doesn't matter because you use it and you throw it away. If you are using a nickel metal hydride rechargeable or an 18650 lithium polymer battery you're going to use it over and over but you want to make sure that your battery is in good shape so like I said one of the ways of doing that is with a checking the internal resistance of the battery the higher the internal resistance it is the hotter the battery is going to be the less efficient it's going to be so what we want is a battery with a low internal resistance what we've got here is the Nano, an OLED, two 10 watt, 10 ohm power resistors. These are ceramic and they are wired in parallel. And over here we have a 1K resistor that I actually measured and it turns out to be 979 ohms. And believe me, we're gonna use that value because we want this to be as efficient as possible and then we have a 2N4401 transistor to switch in our load. I know you're probably going to say you need a MOSFET, but listen, this is only going to be on for a half a second, so a transistor is going to be just fine. Now, let's go over the connections real quick. From the Arduino, we have 5 volts going to the power rail and ground going to the ground rail. We also have ground coming out over here. Now, D9 comes over here and goes to the base of the transistor. So that is what is going to be activating our transistor. A0 is in parallel, and the first way it goes is over here to one side of our 1K resistor. And then the other connection goes through these two parallel power resistors. Now the parallel power resistors are connected to the emitter of the resistor and the collector of the resistor is connected to the positive voltage from the battery. The negative voltage from the battery is connected to ground then we have a tack switch here that comes over to D5 right here and that is going to switch in our load in parallel with this little 1k resistor all right so the way it's going to work is you know you put your battery in and you switch the thing on and that's going to give us the first reading, which is called V1. That is half of it. What, the, the way we're calculating the internal resistance is using the voltage drop method. And I'll explain that when we go over the code. So you put your battery in, you, you turn it on, it grabs the battery's unloaded voltage and current. You click the tack switch, it grabs the battery's loaded voltage and current does a couple calculations and will show you the internal resistance. All right, let's go over the code and then we'll check it out in action. Okay, so here we have the code for the Arduino battery internal resistance meter. Let's start with our includes. We only have two. We need the wire library for the OLED screen, which is of course I squared C and 
we need the Adafruit SSD 1306 library, which is the OLED driver. Now we have a few defines here. OLED Reset 4, and that comes with the uh, Adafruit SSD 1306. Then we have VN is an A0, attack switch is 5, and X base, which is the base of the transistor, is 9. We only have one object, Adafruit SSD 1306, and we're creating an instance of the OLED called Display. And the only argument it requires is OLED Reset, which we defined up here as 4. Okay, so our variables. We have V1, which is a float variable, that is the unloaded battery voltage. V2, which is the loaded battery voltage. I1, which is the unloaded current. I2, which is the loaded current. Internal resistance, which is our calculated internal resistance in ohms. And VCAL. Okay, this is our calculated voltage reference. Trying to be as you know precise as possible, the um, USB you know puts out the five volts. But what we want to do is we want to measure between five volt and ground on the Arduino to find out what exactly the Arduino is using as its internal resistance calculation or its internal voltage reference and in my case it is 4.640 so adjust that for your own needs next we have an integer called load since we're using the two 10 ohm resistors in parallel we have 5 ohms and we have a boolean variable called J I don't know why I called it J I just did <laughs> which is to find out if the switch was triggered or not now for our setup we have display begin SSD 1306 at the hex address of OX3C. Now if you're using that SSD 1306 library, it comes with the default hex address of OX3D, so make sure you change it to the correct hex address for your display. Then we do display display to show what's in the buffer. Then we clear the buffer in the display. We set up our pin modes. VN is an input. I know it's defaulted as an input, but I like to specify each and everything so there are no surprises. Pin mode tack switch, which is an input pull up. So our tack switch, which is. Where did I put it? Oh, yeah. On digital 5 is pulled high. When you press the button, it will go low. Then pin mode X base, which is the base of the transistor, set as an output. And here we are going to grab our initial unloaded voltage. We're doing it in setup so it only grabs it once. This is important later when we switch in the load. So our initial unloaded voltage is an analog read of the VN pin times the VCAL divided by 1023. And that will give us a voltage. And then our initial unloaded current is voltage divided by that resistance which is 979 ohms. Then we begin the main loop of the program. The first thing we do is we check to see if the switch is triggered. If it is we call the function IRCALC. We'll get there in a minute. <laughs> then we're going to do our displays. We're going to set the text size for one, text color for white, and we're just going to print out all the information that we have. I'm not going to go over each and everything we printed out, but I will tell you, if you notice these variables here that have a comma 3 at the end, that forces it to print to three digits. Now here is our IRCALC function. The first thing it does is it turns on that transistor, so it switches the load in parallel with the unloaded voltage. And we get our V2 voltage, which is the analog read of Vn times Vcal divided by 1023. Same formula we used for the unloaded, but now it's loaded. And we have our loaded current, which is V2 
divided by the load. Then we shut off the transistor. Now we're going to calculate the internal resistance of the battery and this is the formula right here using the voltage drop. It is V1 minus V2 divided by I2 minus I1. Notice how they're switched? Okay. So we do a couple little calcs here first. Our V calc is V1 minus V2. Our I calc is I2 minus I1. And our internal resistance is V calc divided by I calc. And times minus 1. So we get a positive uh, number. Then it just comes up here and fills in the blanks. Alrighty. That's all there is to the code. Let's go check it out in all right, action. Let's check this thing out. So I am using a Rexton BRC 18650 4200 milliamp hour. And uh, believe me, this thing's not 4200 milliamp hour. That's some Chinese math going on there. So we put it into the LiPo holder, making sure we have the polarity correct. And power up the Arduino. All right, let me zoom in here a bit so you can see the screen better. So we have our V1 and I1. Our V1 is 3.846 volts and our I1 is 0 0.004 amps. V2, I2 are all zero as well as internal resistance. So we click the switch. We get a V2 of 3.855 a I2 of 0 0.771 and an internal resistance of 0 0.012 ohms. So that is the internal resistance of this battery. And that's a pretty low resistance. So regardless of the actual capacity of this one hung low 18650, it is a healthy battery. Now I'm gonna pop this LiPo holder off here and I'm gonna bring in a nickel metal hydride battery holder or you know, just plain double A battery holder and plug it in just to show you that it works just as well with a nickel metal hydride battery. All right, so remember since it's grabbing the V1 in setup, you're gonna to need to reset the Arduino to grab your initial voltage and bada bing we now have an internal resistance of this double a of 0 0.684 so that's over a half an ohm of internal resistance quite a bit higher than the lipo so i've had this nickel metal hydride for about six years so you can see that it has uh, deteriorated somewhat well that's it for this uh video on how to calculate the internal resistance of your batteries. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, share, comment. Um, hey, and if you haven't checked out Julian Islet's channel, check it out. It's awesome. I'll see you next time.